Okay, wow. So, as we bring ourselves back to the beautiful islands of our beings, of our bodies and our chairs, just soften yourself, your body, your mind, your hands, your face, and let the energy of the day wash over you like beautiful, soft waves of love, because that's exactly what it is, beautiful, reflecting your own beauty, soft, like the arms of the divine around you. Waves, like the blood flow through our body, like the breath through the body as it comes and goes in waves. And the love of the entourage of Kryon for all of humanity, the honoring of humanity and what it is we do when we choose to come here. No small task. And when we gather together like we have this weekend, we honor each other. We honor our souls. We honor this human form that we've taken. And we're grateful so grateful that we have the opportunity to move through so much in just one lifetime that continues to awaken this soul, this limitless, beautiful, divine, magnificent, sacred soul. For outside of what you see in the mirror, That is exactly who you are, who we are together, each one of us touching and uplifting the other. Limitless, magnificent, divine, sacred, perfection held in the arms and in the heart of love. Greetings, dear ones. I am Cryon of Magnetic Service. My partner steps aside and all that he is remains as a human. The best kinds of channeling that require human language must come through the human. There are all manner of kinds of channeling, as we've told you before. There's the art of the music, the sculpture, and more. But instructions and language comes through humans. It has to. It has to. And that is in honor of humanity. It is in honor of the way the process works the God inside. Instructions from a human means more to you than you know. If it came from a rock or a tree, it would be miraculous a tendency then to worship the rock or the tree. Someone would object. They'd move the rock and cut the tree down. (laughs) When it comes through a human, there would be those who might disagree. But then there would be those who would discern and know. Because the human has a built-in attribute, God inside. So it's less of a stretch of the imagination to think, perhaps, that the human being could reach out and bring in the divinity tonight. I want you to feel it. The discernment that you would have 
is important to us. We want you to know it's real. If you have a situation where a human says they are channeling, you take notes and go home and behave differently. That is not what we're asking for. We want it to resound in you as beautiful and truthful. We want you to know that this particular message is one that would never hurt you or ask you to do anything inappropriate, would love you as a mother and a father loves their offspring. We are not parents to you. We are family. But we are loving family, and the benevolence of the messages should be clear. There is great honor with your courage. You move from an old to a new energy, and within that, there is so much promise. For the very paradigm of humanism, cellular structure, consciousness, has such a potential for improvement. And the part that makes us so pleased is that now we can start teaching you something very, very special, how you are changing. The human race is about to shift into a wiser kind of energy. But wisdom takes many forms. It is not necessarily just in your consciousness. Let me present something that we broached last night in a smaller meeting and that we have been talking all around for many years. Your body, your cellular structure, even that which you would call your intellect, your thinking, all of that is somewhat restricted. It's restricted by the fact that the body engine, which you would call DNA, is only working at about a third of the efficiency that it's possible to work at. The body engine is designed in a way that you would have vastly longer lifespans than you currently do. The DNA that you have, the intellect which you could have, the connection to the other side of the veil which you could have, depends upon an efficiency that is greater than you have. And that is what you are broaching. You are moving into a greater efficiency. Don't look at it numbers that you would have a certain percentage here or there. We give you these things to make it clear to you. But when you deal with multidimensional energies, you cannot use linear terms. The evolution of the human being all of you, not just old souls, is going to target itself in the efficiency of your DNA. The old souls will be the first ones to see it and use it. That means you as the teachers will then teach it to the others who are not able to see it and use it as easily as you are. Therefore, the old souls not an elite group, are simply the older group. The ones who have a greater understanding and wisdom now on what to do with it, you can see it. The younger ones, and I speak now of younger souls, the ones on the planet who have not had the lifetime experience you have, the younger souls, will see that you have something that they don't. Some of them will reject you because of that, and others will want to have what you have. More and more will see the older souls, the wisdom, the improvements, and want them. Eventually, your task will be to bring them online with what you know. 
Dear ones, I want to weep. With that statement alone, finally, a world where civilization begins to grow up, where there becomes a demarcation with the elders based upon the number of lifetimes you live instead of the years that you've been on the earth. Old soul elders can be 20 years old. And there will be those at their feet because you see their wisdom, not the wrinkles on their face, where the discernment will come from a whole different place in your brain than it does now, and you will know who they are. So some will be elders on the planet, some will be young people on the planet, and there will be no generation gap between them when they have a simultaneous, synchronized wisdom. One of the things that I want to tell you about tonight that is such a difference in the evolution of humanity will be what is going to happen with your bodies. I want to review with you for a moment what a body is like operating at approximately a third of its potential. In your life right now, so many things are what we would say an issue within you. It's almost like your body does things to you. <laughs> it doesn't. It does things apart from you because you do not have a bridge between your conscious thought and your cellular structure's actions. In the physical, you'll catch diseases. You won't know about it. There'll be all manner of things that you fight all your life called health. What is good for you? What is not good for you? Are you eating things that have been genetically altered? What will that do? How will it affect you? All of those things will correct themselves, dear ones, with a body that starts to evolve so that it knows consciously and cellularly what's going on. You will have discernment of food. You walk into the store, you'll feel its vibration and reject it or accept it. Do you have any idea what this will do to the manufacturer's sales? <laughs> when human beings simply stop buying things because their intuition says don't buy them, that will have an effect, a very 3D effect. This ripples all the way through the manufacturing energy, attributes, plans. Just imagine, that's human evolution. What about the other things we have told you about? that are inefficient in your body. You cannot control them or affect them. You just have to deal with them. That is going to start to change. We have told you that your intuition is going to sharpen. You will start to see the connections between brain, heart, and intuitive sense. You'll start realizing the system of the body is so much larger than science has told you. This is not the fault of science. Science does its best to give you the best it can in knowledge of how things work biologically. Doctors and nurses trained in the very best that they know. But dear ones, what I'm telling you is that they don't know what they don't know, and it's not their fault. As human beings begin to advance and develop, the things that they will have first is the wisdom that you would continue to, con 
to really conceive as consciousness change, ascension processing. I want to get ready for you to understand the cells of the body are going to start changing. Last night we told you about cellular awareness. It is all part of this. But there's one big one we haven't told you about. Some of you are bothered by something you cannot control. It's beautiful, old soul, that you have an akash that remembers. But when you have a body working at 33%, you cannot control what it gives you. And sometimes what it gives you is past life trauma. Where was the last time you were killed and how did it, how did it affect you this time? No control. You go to sleep, you'll have dreams. Sometimes they're exceptionally disturbing. They may be reoccurring. You want to know where they're coming from. It's the energy from the Akash. It's the last lifetime or the one before, a short lifetime where something happened. It stays with you. It sticks with you. You can't control it. You'll go to a past life reader whose gifts are there on purpose for a reason to help humanity. And if the past life reader is one who has a gift which is accurate, they'll be able to help you to see it and dismiss it. You will then be able to rewrite what happened in the past. Some of the best healing methods of this planet, we told you a week ago, are not chemical-based. No longer. They're energy-based. And the energy we speak of mostly is the energy of knowledge, wisdom, and consciousness. When you can discover something and know something, you can correct it, you can reprogram it. This day you learned about tapping. You learned about decoding a little. You learned literally about body talk. You talk to your cellular structure. It helps you by talking back. You learn things. You heal yourselves. And on you go. Some of you are distressed because you know the truth and you can't get to it. You know about how you can change that which is in you, which you want to change, but you just can't get to it. If that's you here today, I'll tell you that's why you're here today, because I have news for you. You came at the right time at the right place. I'll give you a promise. You are getting to it because you ask for it, because this energy will support that. Stop fighting it. Stop trying to figure it out and say an affirmation, dear God, thank you for the connection you gave me today, for it's going to be different from now on. I'm in control. That's your evolution. The fact that you are asking for it generates an energy of solution. The very acknowledgement of the knowledge that you can do it creates an action. Body awareness. You don't have to fight it. You don't have to do it. You just have to acknowledge that it's there. Pause with me for a moment. Even before I give you some news I've never given you before. And celebrate the power of the old soul. The beauty of synchronicity that would put you in a group like this. To listen to a family member. Give you a fireside talk. <laughs> about the good news. No matter what is before you on the planet socially, no matter what your news says, everything starts with you. It doesn't start from the big to the little. It starts from the little to the big 
one at a time, the human beings will change. The result will be grander wisdom, acceptance or non-acceptance of foods, policies, attitudes, everything. And as it starts to happen worldwide, and it will, eventually, you'll turn on the news and it won't be what it is today. You're impatient. I tell you new energy is coming. You're turning on the news and say, I don't see it. Not understanding, you guide it by what you do today, not what your television set does. Your changes today will affect others tomorrow. That will affect others tomorrow and another tomorrow. The planet changes slowly. Sociologists will tell you there have only been four changes since humanity began in what you do. That's how slow it is to them. And they study human behavior in groups. Do not take this message as saying it's going to take a long, long time. There is an acceleration of change. That's part of what your recalibration is. Back to the Akash. What have you been through? Also, I will tell you a truth. What have you been through? Everything. You name it. And you've been through it. anything because the human experience includes so many things especially in an old energy where you did not have some of the comforts today you have of health of curing of understanding of knowledge of knowing now we told you in the past that human beings tend to reincarnate in what is called Akashic groups. You used to call them karmic groups. We're dismissing karmic energy. The old soul doesn't need it anymore. We'll call it Akashic groups. You tend to reincarnate in the same places, in the same families for a certain amount of time, and then you may move on. What causes you to live in a small town in Canada? Now, not all of you do, and I know who's here. I'm speaking to the locals. Why? How many of you feel you were pioneers here? Go back even further. How many of you worked the land as the ancients here? And if you were one of those, I would like to remind you. Something I said last night, how many children did you lose? As common things that the pioneers had. What was your reaction to it? Does it appear, old soul, in your dreams? You see, the old soul is beginning to awaken and become more sensitive, and here's the good news for you. We know about this. The body knows about this. You are broaching a multidimensional barrier of wisdom acknowledgement. The body is becoming smarter, and in the process, it's going to give you greater mental health. And the way it's going to do it is by giving you the power, not automatically, the power to choose a new word, Akashic filtering. You can control the Akash that comes to you. Now, what does it mean? If you have an inappropriate remembrance that is affecting your life, all you have to do is acknowledge it with your body and say, we do not wish to have that remembrance for it is affecting us in this lifetime. Your body, your innate, your cellular structure, all is you. It's not another entity. Your Akash is not somewhere else, somebody else pushing a button for you. But at 30% or 33%, it feels like it, doesn't it? 
You can't control your dreams. You can't control the energies. Some of the habits you have are coming from your past life. Some of the things that you are reacting to today is because you have unfinished business in the past. None of that is appropriate for an old soul who is advancing in wisdom. You don't need to be bothered anymore. Ah, that's good news. Do you see what I'm saying? You have control and the beginning of it over your Akashic filters. Now, some of you will still have dreams, and you'll say, when can I get rid of those? That's coming from your subconscious, dear ones. That's your duality trying to get to you. <laughs> that is your choice and always has been. You have the knowledge of dark and light, and which one you choose and which one you work with doesn't have anything to do with your Akash. But there is so much that you are based upon who you were I'm telling you, you're going to be able to clean up your act. <laughs> when you get rid of the inappropriate things that are coming to you from past lives. Akashic filtering. Oh, cry on. How do I do it? Where do I go? Where do I start? And the answer is yes. <laughs> Number one, it always is, always is, is do you believe it? Number two. If you believe it, you can change it. It becomes cognized as your reality. Then you start working with it. The same way you mine your Akash, you use Akashic filtering. You start speaking to your own body as though it were a friend because it is, working better than it ever has before because it is, more aware because it is, cells that are listening because they are. Your Akash is a multi-dimensional part of your own DNA. Build your affirmations and say them when you want to. And the affirmations are you speaking to you. And you can just say it, dear Akash, I now have the power through wisdom and ascension over what bothers us and what does not. Use the word us. Not you, not them. We are now going to filter our Akash. Give me the things that I need to know. And dismiss the things that I don't. Instead of a steady series of uncontrollable thoughts and feelings and energies that come at you and disturb you in ways that shape your life, you now have control. Now, just like everything else, it's new. You may not know how to work with it right away. Some of you are able, some of you are not able because your paths are unique. There are old souls in this room who will walk out of there different and apply this instantly and have results. And there are others of you who are coming online, very old souls, but just learning the process, the feelings, the belief. And it will take longer. Don't beat yourself up if you don't get instant results. Oh, how human of you. Give it time. The wisdom of the ancients all had something in common. They looked at time differently. They didn't have any of the modern things you have today. If they wanted to communicate to a friend in another part of the country, they would write a note in their own way. And they'd get a reply in several months. What a system. And they loved it. <laughs> they understood that quality takes time. This is the ancients. It's in you too. For you are your own ancients. Is it not time to not just filter your kosh, but perhaps even do something proactive? Call upon the things that you need to know 
that stood out because they were positive, because they saved your lives, because they gave you peace and comfort. And they were of God. This is the message for this evening. Spiritual ascension and wisdom is just beginning on the planet. The old souls get it first. They teach the others. It is the beginning. It will take some time. But this is the first time we gave you this information. Waiting for this group. Waiting for this time and this place. Think of it. Things are not always as you believe they are. We weep with joy that you've reached this point where finally we can start giving you some seeds of truth that are going to make a difference in your life. Go from this place changed. And so it is.